Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. So far, all I've recorded for this new template, the Crafty Companion, is this workbook. And it's a, it's a beast. And I will link that up here and down below because you should, in my opinion, you should make some sort of workbook, whether it just be a binder, a folder, with plastics, uh, I mean, with sleeve, uh, what is that called? <laughs> Page protectors, that kind of thing. It doesn't have to be as elaborate as this, but I feel like for all the different little small pieces, you're gonna wanna make some sort of workbook or make it as you go. That's always an option as well. Um, and I also wanted to point out, and I don't remember if I pointed this out in the workbook video, I don't remember. Um, I did have to end up stapling the tabs to the laminated um, title sheet dividers. So I did go through and just stapled them. Um, I just did five at an angle, I don't know. I could have just done one probably and been fine because it, it would just would not stick and I don't know if it's my climate or what, but anyway, neither here nor there. So I was rocking my brain, what should we start on first? What is a necessity? What is the first thing we need to start making all of our different components for our crafty companion stuff? So we got a workstation, we got a storage unit, we've got another type of workstation with removable mini crafty racks. We've got all different types of ways that we can use this set of templates. So I thought I would start with the garbage bow and the ink tray, the, um, the ink, and blender tray that we have and the garbage bowl. So I thought we would start there. We'll start simple. Oh, this is again my new template. Um, it, at the time of this recording, it is not out yet, but when you see this, of course, it'll be out and I will have that linked down below in my Etsy shop for my Etsy shop. There's a host section in my Etsy shop for all of the different background designs that are available in the Crafty Companion. Oh, I will also have a link down below to my Amazon. Uh, influencer page. I have a, ver a specific list just for each um, project. So, well, I say each project. I'll have a specific list for the Crafty Companion altogether. So, anything that I can, I will link in there or the equivalent to. Um, like they're the um, like you're going to want some double-sided adhesive. Oh, that looks kind of weird on my camera. Wonder why that is. I hope it doesn't look weird in the in the actual footage. <laughs> um, you can't get this tape on Amazon, but you can get score tape on Amazon. So, but things like this, I'll have linked spe uh, special down below as well. Um, so anyway, I'll link that below the special influencer page uh, Amazon list. I'm gonna be using my floral whimsy for this project, all of my projects. And the reason I, this is a digital paper collection, I chose this because a lot of you have it and honestly, none of the paper collections out right now are really, I don't know, they just don't seem to suit my aesthetic. You know, what I like to look at. So uh, my prototypes, I use a, a way old discontinued one. Um, but anyway, so this way, this way I don't run out. I can always just print off another piece. Um, this is the Floral Whimsy. It's available in my Etsy shop. I will have it linked down below. And I print onto 110 pound white cardstock from Staples is usually what I print on. You can also print on, you can also get lighter weight and not all white uh, 110 pound cardstock are created equal. They're all slightly different. So you're gonna have to do like a little test um, on your own printer. Uh, you don't have to print on such heavy weight. I just, for this, for my, taste. I like the way it feels. This isn't cardstock. This is just paper. Matter of fact, you could print just on paper when you're, when you're matting everything. You don't, everything doesn't have to be super thick. It just really depends. Just really depends. Well, we'll talk about that later. So this is what I'm using for my entire project. Projects, plural. This is totally up to you on what size you want your garbage bow. I've been playing around with my garbage bow and I've got it looking kind of crazy now. I mean, I love it. I love the way it looks. But we're going to make one just regular. Um, but this size here, let me show you what size that is. We're going to go into the crafty trays. And 
This size garbage bow is the, actually the Crafty Tray medium base with the A letter um, front and back panel and side panels. So it's the bigger one um, in the medium width, okay? So that's what I use for my garbage bow. But if you wanted, here's, here's a larger one. If you wanted a large one, a large garbage bow, well then you pick this Crafty Tray large base here. It's on the same page, it's on page two in the Crafty Tray section. So you need to decide how big you want your garbage bowl. This is the size that I like, um, but again, up to you. Um, and then for the ink tray, in order for your inks to fit, like that is um, Ranger's Distress Ink. And over here, I've got another storage unit back here. Um, and then the archival will also fit inside there. So this, for this size, the reason I, that's the reason I chose this size. It's the same. Oops, get back on there. It's the same, a Crafty Tray medium base, except we're gonna use the C Crafty Tray medium front and back, which is on the same page. So it's the skinny one. So skinny is the C, and the, um, the big one is the A. And then the medium, or in the middle, is the B. Okay, so what we're gonna need, is I'm gonna go ahead and grab the a crafty tray medium base because we're going to use that for both and then i'm going to grab the whoops i can the a crafty tray medium front back and the c crafty tray medium front back and then over here on page three i'm going to grab the a crafty tray side panel and the c crafty tray side panel so those are all, those are the only pieces we need. Hey guys, this is future Jennifer. <laughs> I was editing this video and I realized I didn't address the A4 size issue and I wanted to go ahead and record this really quickly and add this into this video because really the only time this is gonna matter is when you're making your ink tray, your ink station because Normally, as long as you print everything the same, your project is going to work out. Most of the time when you do A4 size, like my templates are designed 8.5 by 11, but you know, I understand that there is a lot of you that have A4 size printers and that is your standard size. But when you're printing my templates out, you have to either click or unclick, fit to page or whatever it is. You have to unclick something or click something to make sure you can see the whole page so like for example this is page two in the crafty trays right the, the, i'm using this one as an example because that is what i used to make my ink station um this is what it's supposed to look like but when you don't unclick something on a4 right this is what it looks like so it cuts off both sides so when you unclick it or click it or whatever your printer does it shrinks it down just a little bit so the, the size is going to be a little bit smaller so for everything else it's not going to matter but for this you know the ink pads aren't a different size where you live so in order for your ink pad to fit what i did was i have this is an a4 size piece of paper i cut down and ran through my printer and i've tested it out to see I mean, I took a picture of my setting. Let me grab it. At least I think I did. This is it. So for my printer, I had to, it's, okay, you can see that it's on. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not. I say that, but you probably can't see it. It's on A4 size paper. Whoa. Look at that weirdness. Okay. <laughs> um, and then I have fit to page clicked. So it's, um, it fills up that whole screen pretty much, right? So then when I printed it, it cut off, you know, two of the sides. So what I want you to do is I want you to do a test page and page number two in the crafty tray is perfect. It's the perfect page to test. <laughs> Print this off just like I did and then take your uh, ink pad and lay it on there, right? Now it should, you should be able to, um, when you trim this this out, this whole section here out, leave this little bit over here on, okay? So trim it out all the way around the three sides with the, with the printed edge, but then leave this side on. And that should be 
perfect for your ink pads, okay? So you might want to make a special set of templates just for your ink station. So if you wanted to make more than one ink station, you wouldn't have to go through this every time. So I just wanted to throw that out there because um, I forgot to mention it. And I don't want everybody to go through and make all their ink stations. And then when they go to put their ink in it, um, they're like, oh my gosh, it's too small. Because yours is automatically going to be smaller because it's A4 size. Now mine is snug. It is snug, and, and that's because of all the different layers and stuff, but I don't mind that at all. It was super snug when I first put it in, but now it comes in and out easily. So, so anyway, so if you're A4 size, make yourself a special set of templates, or set of temp this page, just this page. So then you're going to also have to, I guess that's not true, you're going to also have to, have to adjust your mats. When you go to mat it, you can use these for the outside, but then the inside mats, well heck, you could probably use these for the inside mats too. So that's what I would do. I would I would make yourself one set of templates, one page, just this one page, like this, and leave that side bit on, and use this for your mats as well. Okay, so I hope this helps everybody, but as, as far as everything else, it's not going to matter because this is the only thing that you're going to, you know, everything is, the size of the ink pad is the same. Does that make sense? So this is the only thing that you need to make this little special adjustment to. Otherwise, you need to shrink it down just a hair to where you can see everything. Okay, all right, back to the video. Not my score mat. I got my score pal out. A score pal craft mat out and then I grabbed a sheet of 12 by 12 medium weight chipboard and what I'm gonna do is I'm literally just gonna lay this on here and I'm gonna trace it out with a pencil I might I might change it over to to a sharpie so you guys can see maybe not I don't know so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trace two of these out. Right? Because we need two. And then I'm going to trace two of these out. So this is the A crafty side panel. And it looks like I may have... I might have cut my traceable templates a little short and that happens so if that happens just match it up to the top edge there uh, with that piece still intact that way it'll be the same height then scoot it over you need one more of these yeah because it looks like it's um, there's a gap there so it looks like I might have cut it just slightly shorter than than need be and then the same for these smaller ones the size of C the um, C crafty tray side panel yeah see this one I did the same thing I must have cut them all slightly shorter accidentally so I can either go back and fix that or just remember that I'll probably just remember that because you know that workbook it's it's a it's quite a it's quite an undertaking isn't it okay so you need two of those for the sides of your um, for the sides of your ink station so we've got all the side pieces traced now I'm gonna I need two of these front panels I wonder if I can get both of these on I bet you I bet you so I'm gonna Lay this on here. Let's see. Right. Sometimes I wish I'd have made two traceable templates so I can literally just lay them on here right on top of each other. I think it makes life easier. <laughs> Alright, so now I'm also going to take the C. I'm hoping I can fit this in here. I can. Wonderful. So now you know you need a half a sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock to make both of these items the garbage bowl and the crafty or <laughs> the garbage bowl and the ink tray station. I don't, I can't, I'm having a hard time naming that, right? Um, I am going to leave these out for a minute because I want to tell you something later on in the video about those. Okay, 
so now I'm gonna take I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna take my craft knife and I'm first gonna start on these this this front and back panels because they're taller than the rest so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna go a little past where they are and I'm basically just gonna separate so you want to make several softer passes versus um, pressing down really hard. You don't want to press down really hard. So first I'm going to take this little slim smidge whoops, off here. Got to be a little bit more careful. Ah! It's such a small little piece. I mean, tiny. Okay, so then I'm going to separate the two smaller pieces. Right, and then we'll cut that apart uh, in a minute. Okay, and then I'm going to flip this back around and then I'm going to continue to cut all of these things apart. And then I will be back. Okay, so I've got all my little pieces, so each little crafty tray is what they are, have what, one, two, three, five pieces. So you want to make sure you've got five pieces, two front and back pieces, two side pieces, and one base. So I've got all of those cut. So, and then, you know, keep this because you're going to want to save all of your bits and pieces because you never know, you might need a little sliver, you might need something. So always keep your pieces. So here, I want to show you something. I made both of these, I made both of these right before I started recording. And there's a difference in the two, and I'm not sure if you're going to be able to tell. But if you look, this one here, the one on top, is done, and it's, it's just raw chipboard on the top. It's just raw chipboard. There's open corners. This, in this style, um, we did, we used construction strips and all of that business to put it all together, just like we did the keepsake boxes um, and things. I will link a video below and up here um, to where we made the uh, divided tray, and I think that is exactly how this one is made. So there's raw chipboard um, exposed, and then there's like holes. Whoops. If since I wasn't super careful and precise, there's like little holes and things. Um, yeah, can you see that? Okay, so I'm not going to make my Crafty Companion projects like this. I'm going to do it a different way. So here is the difference. This one, I've used the white cardstock and I've wrapped it around so there's no raw uh, chipboard showing anywhere. There's no holes in the corners. Um, it's just a little bit more finished look. So really, it is totally up to you. If you wanna make it like this, then follow that link that I have down below and the one I had show up here um, and make it just like that. Or you can follow this video and make them like this. I like the cleaner edge. I like the, um, I think it just looks more finished uh, to me. Plus I want it to look real vintage. Um, so I, that's why I wanted the white cardstock so I can really make it look like it's old, you know. Um, I mean, the chipboard, the raw chipboard does too, but, but anyway, I feel like this is a sturdier piece. So I'm going to show you how to do it this way. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, let's uh, put the big one together so you can see it. So the small one goes together the exact same way. So I'm not going to show you both, but I am going to show you this one. Um, okay. So I'm just going to take regular old scotch tape, okay, and I'm going to lay these up next to each other, right where it's supposed to be, and I'm going to tape it down. I'm going to flip it around, and I'm going to add this piece on this side. Right? 
So then I'm gonna flip it to the side and I'm gonna add either the front or back panel. Right now it doesn't have a specific direction. Flip it around and I'm gonna add this piece. If you want to uh, see how I made this, let me know. Um, I'll be glad to do a video on taking just a plain old um, tape dispenser and making it cool. Uh, this is pre-recorded, so but you know, so it'll be a while before you see it. But do let me know if you want to see something like that. All right, I'm going to do the same thing to this. I'm going to add all the pieces, then I'll be right back. All right, so I've got all the pieces connected to each other ink station and the garbage bowl okay okay so now the big old honking roll of tape comes into play and we're just going to pull a section of it out and lay it on our craft mat and yes you do want it on your craft mat so then the side that has the scotch tape on it you want to turn that over and stick that down oh goodness somebody's cutting their grass i hope you can't hear that and it sh this should fit perfectly on here. So all together, this should be six inches, and it is. So then you want to take your craft knife and you just want to trim it away from the roll, just like that. So on this piece, if you happen to not get it right up on the edge there, then go ahead and, whoops, then go ahead and trim that back just a little. Um, I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. I'll go ahead and show you again. Okay. I'm just laid a piece out, scotch tape side down. I'm just gonna try to line it up. Okay. Now, again, you can do this. You can put your boxes together any way you want. Um, this is just the way I've done it a bazillion times, um, to all kinds of different ways throughout these many months of working on these templates. So they all work relatively the same way. So you do your preferred method. All right, let me sit that aside for a second. I need to grab in my storage binder here. Let me move that aside. I'm gonna try not to get nothing stuck to anything. I have, I keep all of my backing sheets. So when I do end up needing some place to stick a large piece down, I've got it. There's one right there because I, that's, that, I don't wanna waste that piece of tape. It could totally be used for other stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stick this down here, right? So this isn't gonna go far because what we're gonna do is we're not gonna trim these corners out. Now we're not gonna throw them away because we are going to use them. But we're going to use them in just a minute, right? So we're going to trim all the corners out right up next to the chipboard. Just like that on that one. And the same thing on the big one. We're going to go ahead and we're going to keep all four pieces because we are going to use them. Oops, I can see I didn't trim that edge very well. So the, this craft knife is actually, this utility knife has actually come in really handy because it's flexible somehow. Um, it, and it's, it can get right up in there for, for this type of thing. So, okay, so on the back side it looks like this, right? So when it folds, they fold up into the, um, fold up into the tape. Does that make sense? I hope that just made sense. So I'm gonna take my bone photo really quick and I'm just gonna give it a good burnish. 
I do have a wider one. Let me find it. I have one of these, uh, but I know a lot of you don't, and it does kind of help make this a little bit easier, but I'm not gonna use it because I know a lot of you don't have one of those. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing to this. All right, I'm gonna set those two aside for a second. And we're gonna do this. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab a sheet of white card stock. And I'm using the 12 by 12, the Recollections 12 by 12. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna st stick this down. I'm gonna take the tape backing. And again, you may wanna hang on to this. Um, I, had, I had one, you know, already, but you wanna hold on to all these little pieces because, you know, the, you're gonna have little bits and pieces that you can stick down to it so you don't waste. So I'm literally going to try to line up this corner. I was gonna say, I hope my camera's on. <laughs> I'm gonna do the best I can anyway. Well, I stuck it down. I was gonna line up the corner, but I didn't get it lined up right here. That's okay. I'm gonna press down really hard. I'm gonna flip this around. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna attach this one down as well. Look, <laughs> I'm gonna go to this corner. I'm gonna try to line it up in the corner. And I'm gonna mess it up again. That's okay. A lot of times the cardstock isn't perfectly straight either. So, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and burnish those down just a little. All right, now I'm gonna come through with my craft knife and I'm going to slice away um, the excess cardstock like this and over here on this, but I'm gonna leave those corners. Did I not slice that one? Better? Whoops. Well, I'm just cutting into the chipboard there. Okay, so again, I'm gonna leave those four corners. So I'm gonna do the same thing to this. So again, we did the same, same thing to both pieces. So I'm gonna show you in the big piece uh, what to do next. So we're gonna take it, the corners are still attached, we're gonna flip it over, and we are going to kind of burnish that fold right there. So we're gonna flip it, make a crease, and burnish it down. And we're gonna do the same thing to this side, and this side. Right, we're gonna do the same thing to both. Um, and careful not to press down with your fingertip with this chipboard. Um, I have gotten a paper cut with this chipboard and it hurts really bad. <laughs> Don't do it. Okay, all right. So we got both pieces that look like this. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna come back. I want this might as well. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna pick up these corner pieces and I'm gonna slide them right back in there. Oh my gosh! Can you guys hear that? I'm gonna have to talk to my neighbors. <laughs> During the day is filming time and it's like a heat index of, of super hot today. I don't even know, but. You shouldn't be out there. It's the middle of the day. Okay, so they don't have to fit perfectly, so do not, you know, get hung up on that. They just need to cover most of it. Um, Cause you can see like right there, it's kind of went over. It doesn't matter, it's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the little pieces back 
to here. Guys, I hurt myself so bad the other day. Oh, yesterday, actually. It was actually yesterday. Um, I wonder how long my phone's been sitting there. I was cleaning or, or, or um, changing my sheets, and I had washed and dried a set of sheets, and I was, like, trying to straighten out a pillowcase, you know, just kind of flicking it, holding it in the corner and flicking it. My nail snapped right down the middle, all the way down the middle, and then over, and oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It's a good thing I'm a nail tech, because I don't advise you doing this, but I have all the proper stuff to do it. I, I did it quickly, so <laughs> I cleaned it, which again, is painful as I'll get out. Um, I don't advise you, if you do that, I do not advise you to go to your nail place um, and get that fixed right away. I advise you to put a Band-Aid on it and let it be still. But I just don't have that luxury <laughs> right now. So now what I want you to do is on the long side panel sides, like these sides here, I just want you to slice to where that comes loose. So just slice those two spots and these two spots. Oops, did I get off on that one? Right? So we're gonna do the same for both. I look like, I feel like I'm pressing really hard and there's no need for that, no need. Okay. All right, so I did the same for both and then I'm gonna take my scissors. I'm gonna get my old garbage bowl out so I don't make us too much of a mess because we're making a new one that I'm going to be using. So right there where we made that cut, we're going to cut at an angle all the way up into that corner. Do you see that? All the way up into that corner. Then we're going to come over here to this side, cut at an angle all the way up to that side there, right? So now we have something that looks like that. And then I'm just going to take a quarter of an inch off the end, right? That's it. That's simple. I'm going to do that to all four sides. Again, cut it right there where you just made that slit, right? And then cut this side. This is why I said it doesn't matter if the tape fits or not because um, you're going to be trimming it down anyway. So, all right, I'm going to do that to both of these and then I'll be back. So I've got both of them done. You know, I tabbed both, uh, both pieces. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to flip our, our projects over this away and we're going to flip those tabs in and uh, let me burnish just really quick just to be sure. So I'm going to show you how to do it on the big one and then you can do the same thing on the small one. So we're going to, oops, put my garbage bowl away. We're going to go ahead and remove the tape backing. I'm going to remove all four. You don't have to. If you want to take your time and do one side at a time, that's fine too. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it up here and I'm going to match these corners up. So I'm just going to match them up and hopefully I've got it at a good 90 degree angle. Um, and then I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to match those corners. Right? Pretty good pretty good and then we're gonna match these corners and match those corners I find this method to be the fastest way but you do it however you want to do it so now I'm just gonna take my bone my Teflon bone folder and I'm gonna go ahead and really press those tabs in Right, so now we've got a box, right? So the inside looks like this now and the outside looks like that. All right, I'm gonna do the small one and then I'll be back. So now I've got my two little boxes. This is my ink station and this is my garbage bowl. Okay, so next we're gonna need our paper trimmer. And I'm gonna have to try to, it's too big to, to let me move this. It's too big to just slide under there like I wish it would. <laughs> We're also going to need, um, I wonder, 
this leftover scrap. I didn't do a very good job. I don't know which side is the straight edge. I guess I could, I guess I could look. Oh, this isn't going to be enough anyways. Oh, yeah, it will. So, for the small box, you're going to need two strips of paper. You're going to trim two strips. And what I want you to do is I want you to measure the width of your pieces. So, if you cut your slightly smaller or slightly bigger, um, I want you to measure that. And then I want you to add an inch. So, in my case... Um, this is an inch and a half I need. So I need two inch and a half strips. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten one edge. Oh, I bumped you. I'm so sorry. See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's just not a room. Um, so there's, uh, I straightened that edge up. So now I'm going to cut an inch and a half because that was three inches. Okay, so that's for the small box. And then for the big box, again, you need to make your own measurements because um, yours might be different. So when you're doing this method, just make sure you add an inch. Um, so this one, I'm gonna be doing two and a half inch strips. So I need two, two and a half inch strips. So I'm gonna grab another sheet of the white card stock. This is 12 by 12. So I'm going to slide it in, what did I say, two and a half? Two and a half, I'm going to have, do two, two and a half inch strips. Ooh, I need to clean my blade. Okay, so I'm going to set this piece aside. Remove my paper trimmer. Okay. Now I need a scoreboard, and all I want you to do for both uh, sets of strips here, grab them and get them out, is I want you to score a half an inch from whichever end, so it's just easier to score the furthest one. So you just want to score a half an inch um, away from one edge, just one. just kind of more of a guide it just helps you get everything lined up correctly I do really enjoy this by the way um, you can get it on Amazon you can also get it uh, scrapbook.com I will link it I think it, no no you can't get it can you I don't remember shoot but if I can uh, I'll link it to, to several different places I do like it actually so all right let me move this other way oh geez. I got excited about that all right I'm gonna grab my craft mat back out Okay, so first thing, I'm going to go ahead and prep my folds. So I'm going to prep them by folding them, and then I'm going to burnish them. big deal. I'm going to need that so don't put that away. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to cut some strips or some pieces. So I'm basically just going to lay it up here. And yeah, maybe I shouldn't do it that way. And just kind of mark it with my finger. Ooh. Uh, I should use a paper trimmer. Okay. Okay, so what I did was I just laid it up here and measured the length. You could also use your template as well. I'm going to take both of these large pieces. I guess I could go ahead and flatten them back out. I'm going to lay them right on top of each other because I need two of this size. And I'm going to slice. So I've got these two pieces and then. I need to, on this piece, you have to handle it just a little bit different. Okay, so for this piece, what I want you to do is I want you to measure, and then I want you to add an inch and a half. So in that case, it'll be four and a half um, for these pieces. So these two, I'm going to lay them on top of each other, and I'm going to cut them at four and a half. 
And then we've got these random little pieces here. We may or may not end up needing them. So, but these are the kind of things you save that you run through your embossing folders and that kind of thing, and you have them ready for embellishments. So don't throw your scraps away. Uh, since I already got a workstation, I'm gonna throw my scraps in my, my large crafty tray here. Actually, I'm gonna use the medium crafty tray. And a big old roll of tape. I'm gonna throw this in my medium crap. This is the coffee stained background to the inside there. For these two projects, I'm gonna use the floral whimsy to line it just because you guys are going to be seeing it the camera's going to be over top so i wanted it to be just a little bit prettier okay so we got those two pieces cut now we can oh we need to do the other one so that's for the large one <laughs> and then we know for sure that the width is the same as the largest one so we're going to go ahead and cut two more from the smaller pieces we cut at four and a half. So we're gonna make two um, four and a half pieces for the the ink station. I'm gonna go ahead and set them in there. And then the same is for the length as well. So what do we have? I guess I could just mark it. Okay, I don't have enough space to do anything, you guys. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay this on here and mark it and then trim them both out. So this is why I didn't go ahead and put um, tape on these because I knew we weren't gonna need the full strip. I know you cannot see what I'm doing because I keep bumping into the camera. Okay, so I'm just gonna line, I got both pieces here, I'm just gonna line that pencil mark up and slice. So those go over there. I'm gonna put these in my crafty tray. You guys don't have that same problem. You all, do, you all aren't working under a tripod like I am. I'm trying to get my husband to make me something. Some fancy, dancy something or another. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get these ready. Somewhat ready. I'm going to grab the 3 8 of an inch tape. You could use if you have a quarter of an inch and an eighth of an inch, you could use that. Um, use what you have if you don't have these. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that just on that half inch tab. I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all of them. Okay, so we put tape on all of the half inch tabs. I had to get another roll out. This one's actually my mom's. So then on all of these pieces, we are going to put the same 3 eighths of an inch towards the edge, the other edge. So we're putting the tape on the inside where the valley is, right? So it's gonna put 3, of an, three eighths of an inch on each edge. Or if all you have is quarter of an inch, that's fine too. Use quarter of an inch, use what you have. So I'm gonna do that to all of these pieces. Okay, so I did, I got the three inch of an inch tape, and it is, it, it, there is a reason for that. So um, I don't want you to think I'm just being random, <laughs> but there is a reason for that. So for the smaller ones, um, let's do them first. I'm gonna use the half inch. This is half inch score tape, and I'm just gonna put it close to the score mark, like this. Oh, and when I get past three eighths of an inch uh, with tape, I like to use something flat to tear it because the scissors won't cut it straight. At least I can't get it to cut straight. So I'm gonna do this to all the skinny pieces. So I found me a little clear block. I was using my perfect trim ruler, but I found this little clear block at Hobby Lobby a little thicker and I feel like I can hold on to it better plus there's different sizes so if I feel like I need it bigger then I'll get the bigger size okay so for the smaller box there are three pieces of tape on there and then for the larger ones we're going to come up not the tab side but the um, the other side we're going to put a piece of half inch 
Now here on this one, honestly, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a half inch and then an inch be, uh, because I have them. If you don't have them and you just have the three eighths or the quarter of an inch, just do quarter of an inch. Or, or you can also just use wet glue if you'd like. There's no rule that says you have to use score tape. Sequin score tape or um, scrapbook.com. There's all kinds of different tapes out there, but these are the ones I use. Okay. So then with the one inch one, and this one is it's given diff, more difficult to trim. We're gonna fill in that gap right next to that score mark on all of the big ones. So we're just gonna fill that in, tear it up. So I'm gonna do that to the rest, um, to these four pieces, and then I'll be back. I've got all the tape on. I meant to mention uh, way earlier on <laughs> that when, I think I mentioned it when you were making, I don't know if I did or not. I can't remember you guys when we when we made the workbook I can't remember if I told you this but I have a, a quick printing tip video that um, that way you need to make sure you print it correctly so that things like the um, the ink pads will actually fit into your crafty tray I will link that up here and down below um, you need to make sure that you print things off correctly in order for them to work. And as long as you print everything off the same um, and you don't care if your ink fits, then that doesn't matter. But you may want to go check that video out. Okay, so we're going to start, I'm going to put those over here. We're going to start with the large one. Um, what did I just say? I was, I was just thinking to myself, what was I going to do first? <laughs> oh, I am going to, okay, so we got this little... A flap here and I am going to this half inch flap I'm gonna tab tab it just ever so slightly like this Oops, I missed. right so I'm gonna take the tape off of the half inch tab area right and we're gonna start with the sides so I'm just going to kind of like, I guess I should have checked to see if it fit first. <laughs> just kind of slid it on there and kind of worked it into place. And now I'm just pressing it down. So I stuck it down to the bottom, right? You can burnish it better afterward, but I stuck it down to the bottom. So it's attached to the bottom and then you've got this lip here. Well, then what I want you to do is I want you to take the the two middle pieces off and leave that top three eighths of an inch piece of tape. So leave this top piece and I'm gonna take these two pieces off here. All right, and so then I'm just, actually I'm gonna take my bone folder and I'm just gonna use it to try to keep from messing up the squareness here. Right, and so I'm just gonna leave that just like that. Actually, I wonder, should I tab that or not? I don't know yet, I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing to the side. I'm gonna take the backing off the one inch tab and the one inch, or the, I'm sorry, not the one inch, the half inch tab, and that tab is gonna get attached to the bottom of this box. And Basically what we're doing is we're covering up that ugly seam where the two pieces of chipboard meet, right? And then we're gonna take the two middle pieces out and leave the one on the top. Right? Don't press too hard right now. Okay, so we've got this piece of score tape there in that piece. If you had a quarter of an inch piece, that's fine. Just make sure it's on the edge, okay? So we got that. And now we're gonna take the smaller pieces, the shorter pieces, and we're gonna tab these bottom corners, the uh, half inch tab there. We're gonna go ahead and tab those corners or notch them or whatever you wanna call them. We're gonna remove the backing off of that half inch tab. And then we're gonna try to center this on here. It's, it's kind of, it's not that easy to do actually. <laughs> Maybe if I set it on here like this and then pushed it back. 
we're just trying to, that's why we did um, extra more than just a half an inch on each side. Oh, you can't see. Well, you're not gonna be able to see exactly. But there's a, about five eighths of an inch on each side. So I'm just got, and I'm backing it up to hit that half inch tab, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and press that down just like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I did a good job. Okay, so now what I wanna do is, again, I'm gonna take the two middle pieces off, the backing off, and I'm gonna fold that up. Just like that. Right? So now we've covered that bottom corner and it kind of looks a little funky, right? I get it, it looks a little weird. Um, but before we go any further on that, I'm gonna go ahead and attach this other one. So we're gonna take that half inch backing off. And we're just gonna lay it on there and I'm gonna back it up. That was good, that was a good way to get it centered. And I know you can't see, but that's the best I can do. So then I'm gonna press that half inch tab to the bottom of this box. So that's what we got on the bottom so far, right? And we'll flip it around, remove the backing off of the two middle pieces of tape. And I'm gonna flip that up, give it a gentle press. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do now still contemplating. I think I do it different almost every time. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and just, on the two long sides, I'm gonna just take a little bit of that corner off. And then I'm gonna remove the backing off of that piece that's hanging up there, or up top, or hanging over, or whatever. <laughs> Maybe, there we go. And once again, I want to remind you, you guys can make these any way you want to. You do not have to do it my way. So first I'm going to gently fold it over to the top of that piece of chipboard and I'm going to burnish it down really good because I want it to be nice and flat. Then I'm going to gently fold it over to the inside, right? I can't lay it down right now to really get it good and burnished, but that gives you that clean, smooth, edge can you see that and we're going to be lining the inside so it doesn't really matter that you know we've got weird overlapping of the cardstock and all of that so so we're going to go ahead and do that to this side as well i probably could have done this before i put the two front and back pieces on okay again first i'm going to burnish it onto the top of the chipboard and I'm gonna fold it into the inside. Give it a light burnish just because I can't really lay it flat just yet. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna slice this half inch tab that we had created to begin with. I'm gonna go ahead and slice that away from the other piece, the whole piece, so it's kind of flappy. I'm gonna do that to both sides. So now they should be loose. And then I am going to go ahead and notch those just a little bit. Oops, did I get that stuck? I did. Okay, hang on. <laughs> Sticky stuff. That, that tape is some sticky stuff. Okay, so then we've got those little pieces that we just cut away. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this whole piece right here and we're gonna, um, how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna do this? We're gonna fold it. We're gonna fold it over to the side. Right, fold it over to the side 
come around and fold it over to the side. We'll come back and burnish in just a minute. Fold it over to the side. Over to the side. Right? Then when you flip it to the bottom, you want to take those little tabs and you want to push them down. So again, we're going to have to come back and burnish in just a minute. But I am going to take my bone folder and let me go up on the sides like this. Just to make sure, right? Okay, so now in this corner here, I'm just going to take, I'm going to take a notch out, like a V. And you don't even have to remove it. I'll show you. You can leave it until we finish wrapping. I'm trying to find a good way to show you. you see, I just kind of notched that corner out. Okay. All right. Oh, you know what I should have done? I should have taken the tape backing off. Shoot. That's what happens when you record. Okay, you want to do that first because this, this is a pain in the tush otherwise. Okay. So I'm going to take a second and remove the tape backing. You want to make sure you remove that tape backing before you start snipping away because that took a minute. <laughs> okay, so now what you want to do is you want to take these little side pieces and do the same thing. Fold them over, burnish them flat to the top of the chipboard, and then fold them in, right? So you want to go ahead and do that to all four of them. Just take your time. Make sure there's good contact. This helps ensure that you're covering up that little hole, that little gap from where the two chipboard pieces meet. It helps to do that. So. Okay, so then I think we're not gonna need any of these corner pieces. I don't, th yeah, we're gonna need a couple. So if, for example, you think that that's not gonna get covered up, that little corner hole, you just take that little corner piece that you have and you just kind of fold it towards the center and pull. And it should fill that gap, even though I tore off most of it. But look what it did. It filled that little hole. So let me um, bring it up close and make sure it's focused. Nope, over here. Over here, woo -hoo. There we go, come on. Aha. You see how it filled up that little bitty tiny hole? Right, so if you wanted to, you could go through and do them all regardless of if you think it needs it or not. You just bring it in and pull. You just bring it in and pull. Since there's tape on there, it will stick where it needs to stick. Okay. So then you wanna take these pieces, fold them over, burnish them to the top, and then fold them in. Give it a good burnish. Same thing here. Fold that over to the top. Burnish it flat and then fold it to the inside. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take a minute and I'm just gonna go through and give everything just one good burnish. Just so I know that everything is down. Okay, so now this whole box has been wrapped. That's what we'll call it. We'll call it the wrapping of the box. Well, except for this part, but there's gonna be a mat back here. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one off camera because it's the same deal, um, just the smaller one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera. Okay, so I have both of them wrapped and ready to go. I got distracted and messed up one of these, couple of these corners, <laughs> but that's okay. It does not bother me, not one single bit. So the next step is we're gonna do the inside matting. And so to mat these two, I'm gonna go to my crafty tray section. And let me make sure you know that the crafty tray section, because remember each section is numbered the same way. So it goes from one to whatever. Um, each section starts at one. So that way um, we don't have, you know, number 54, page 54. So we're in section crafty trays. 
And um, so we're using the medium base crafty tray, right? And the A and the C front and back panel, front and back or side panels. So on here in the workbook, in the guide, it says uh, the mats for this size A crafty tray medium is on 11M. So that is still in crafty tray. So 11M in crafty tray. So this is the page, right? So what I did was, whoops, what did I do with my, my stuff? Oh. So this is part of my floral whimsy. And I printed what I wanted off first, the page that I wanted off first the, from the floral whimsy. And then I printed 11M over top of it. So I think this one's gonna, yeah, the, duh, because of the size. This is gonna be my garbage bowl. So I'm using this on the inside because you guys are gonna see on the inside. Um, you can use one of the background designs. Like I would, um, I would use the coffee stained one if I wasn't, you know, worried about what you guys see. So I just wanted you guys to have something to look at. So that's gonna be on the inside of my garbage bowl. And then, so that's for that size. And then the size for the ink station is on page 13M. And so I printed the Floral Whimsy paper off first, right? And then I printed 13M on top of that. So these are the inside mats, what I've printed out. So then I printed off, for each one, I printed off a full page of coordinating um, Floral Whimsy background so, because we're gonna do something different for the outside. So let me move this stuff out of the way. So this is for the inside, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my paper trimmer out and I'm gonna trim these all out. You could have uh, traced them out. Instead of printing them, you could have traced it out and put it precisely where you wanted it and that would be just fine as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim all of these pieces out on both this size and this size. I will tell you though, I, I did this on purpose, but I don't remember why. The, the inside side pieces for the small, the size C crafty tray, um, they're a little bit smaller, a little bit narrower, and I did it for a reason, and I don't remember why, and it's driving me crazy. So when I think of it, I will tell you, but I can't think of it at the moment. So <laughs> if you want to cut it the same size as the front and back inside mats, then just follow this line and not this line. I, when I was making the other ones, I'll show you that in a minute because I made those for a reason. <laughs> um, I realized that again, and I can't remember why why I decided to do that. So anyway, so I'm gonna go through and cut them all apart and I'll be back. Okay, so everything is trimmed out and now I'm taking the Distress Ink and Vintage Photo and a Ranger Blending Tool. And since these templates, since I make them by hand, I use, um, I have a distressed edge on them already. So you don't have to add any more to the edges if you don't want to, but you can just take off that edge um, from when you trim the paper out. Of course, if you trace them out, you can ink them up or not, either way. If you don't like the inked edge, you just trace them out and cut them out um, and not ink them up. Okay, so I went ahead and kept this out, even though I'm not using it for the outside. I just wanted to show you guys something when I get to that point. So let me start, I'm gonna do the big one with you guys. So this is the inside, so it's gonna fit on the inside just like that. So I'm just gonna grab my glue. I think I'm gonna use our glitter glue for this. Our glitter glue, it's a little bit cheaper than Fabri-Tac and um, you know, it's not gonna get, it's not gonna be mobile. It's gonna be a stationary piece of paper. So, so I'm just gonna add just a little bit of glue there and then I'm gonna stick it in here. The only thing is the Art Glitter Glue doesn't give you as much time, as much wiggle room as the Fabri-Tac gives. So you, you kind of have to um, get it in there pretty good that first time. Right? So 
So we got that piece, and then let's go ahead and add the end pieces. Just trying to leave just a bit of a gap, and then I'm gonna take my bone folder and just moosh it, moosh it down. So these are, you know, handmade items. So try not to get too caught up on specific uh, things, like it being super perfect. The templates are handmade. Your garbage bowl is handmade. Um, if you want it to be manufactured perfection, then you would probably have to go to the store for that. Um, but this is a perfection to me, so I'm totally happy with, with um, the little imperfections that I end up getting when I hand make something like this. So, plus I enjoy making it. It makes me happy. I get asked all the time, what do I do with my mini albums? Well, even if I didn't do anything with them at all, they make me happy. So, so there. <laughs> so what do you think of that? You know? Okay. I'm going to smoosh that down really good. So just the act of making something makes me happy. And there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. I didn't know if I was going to like the blue, but I do. I like it. I mean, I love the purple, obviously. But I just wanted another little pop of color too. Doesn't that look pretty? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do the small one um, off camera and then I will be back. Okay, so I've got both the insides lined uh, and matted, matted, lined, whatever you wanna call it. I mean, the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this now before we do the outside so that we can dry. I, I don't remember when I made when I made my workbook, I don't remember if I showed you all me adding this in. This was that half a sheet where we also had the tabs on that sheet um, that I ran through the laminator, right? And so I, I punched it and then slit so it could be removable. Well, the reason I did that is because I'm going to take, um, so it's laminated, right? I'm going to take my Distress Oxide and I'm just going to smoosh it. This is not Distress Oxide, I'm sorry, Distress Ink and Vintage Photo. I'm going to smoosh it on there, then I'm going to get it wet. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to get the nooks and crannies in here. Um, I have a paintbrush somewhere. This is a Ranger uh, brush. I, I will link these in my Amazon too, I forgot about these. Um, this one's a number six. You can get a set of them. So all you need to do I kind of designated this for this because I feel like I'm going to be doing this a lot <laughs> over the next couple weeks. <laughs> you just need to get some on your brush. And then, I guess I could bring it up to you. And then just kind of like paint, paint it in. Now, if you like that crisp white, well then leave it. You know, it's your garbage bow. You do whatever you want with it, right? So I'm just going to literally just paint these inside pieces. Um, with the Distress ink, just so that white is toned down a little bit. So I'm going to do that to both. And of course ink hides a multitude of sins, right? So if you made a boo-boo somewhere, you can just hide it with your ink. No one will ever, ever know. And if they do, oh well. And if they say something to you about it, tch, they're just meanie pants. Okay. So it's just a quick little, little added little detail. Okay, and so I'm gonna set this aside. I don't think we'll need it, but I need it to dry. Oh, I put a piece of fabric washi on here so that when I set it down, it didn't roll that kind of stops it from rolling, <laughs> in case you're wondering what that's about. All right, I'm gonna let those, I'm gonna set those aside and let those dry. Let me bring these two back out. Okay, so for the outside mats, you could use the same mats that were on page 11M and 13M, 
but I want to show you the difference. The outside dimensions are slightly different than the inside and it all depends on how you put it together, on, on what thickness of chipboard you use. Um, do not use the extra thick or the thick. Don't go any bigger than medium. I'm t I'm, you don't need to, in my opinion. Um, but it just depends on how you manage to get it put together. So, side by side here. One is the inside mat and one is the actual t template for that for the um, chipboard side. So this is the inside mat, right? You see how tiny it is compared to the outside edges of the little tray? And then this is the actual traceable template for the side. So you can see it's just a little bit smaller than the actual tray itself, right? So I, it depends on what look you like. I like this look. This one is printable. You can print this off, but this one is not. You have to trace it. So the template was getting really, really big, so I had to, I had to make some decisions. <laughs> okay, so for the garbage bowl, we need um, a piece of my Floral Whimsy Crafty Tray Medium Base and the A crafty tray medium front back and the A side. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, just like I traced it out on the chipboard, is I'm going to, um, I'm going to lay these out. I'm trying to figure out where exactly I wanna start. Trace around them, I need two sides, and two, one front, or two front, you know, front back. And then one bottom. You could do the bottom could be um, just solid color if you want it to, but I'm going to do this. So I'm going to trace the um, size A out on this piece, and then the C is going to be traced onto this piece. I'm going to trace them all out. I'm going to cut them out. I'm going to ink them up, and then I'll probably come back. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got them all cut out and I traced out, cut out, inked up, and I already went ahead and matted the outside of the ink station. So I just wanted to show you here, this, this one we used the actual chipboard that you would be tracing on the chipboard with, that template. And then here's the mat for the inside. It is considerably smaller. Can you see that? So it's just really a personal preference. It's up to you which way you would like to do it. So anyway, I just happen to like that. And you can also adjust it this way if you're, if it's too long, just snip a little bit off. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start at the bottom. I've already got everything inked up. I'm gonna start down at the bottom. Look how dirty my, you probably can't tell. Look how dirty my workspace is just from sliding around. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead. I think I'm gonna put a generous amount of glue on the bottom here because I'm gonna put feet on here because I you don't have to do that either. I just think it's cute. And I don't want it lifting up. You could also use tape for this part too if you really wanted to make sure you could use both tape and glue. Okay, so I'm gonna continue gluing these on. Okay, so I've got it all matted all the way around. And I went ahead and inked this whole box up. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink this one up and then we'll put some feet on it. And while we're waiting for the feet to dry, I'll show you what I did here. So I'm just going along the edge, really, not even trying to be super careful. And I'm just hitting all the whites just so it all looks like one cohesive piece now. If you angle your blender the right way, you can get both sides at the same time. Right? Okay. You could leave it just like this. You don't have to do anything further. You don't have to add feet. You could add... <clears throat> you could add... Um, oh like thick jewel let me let me see if I can find some well I can't find them right off hand but you could totally do like the big glass beads or the big plastic beads that are round that kind of look like cushions you could totally glue those on the bottoms um, you can just leave it as it is 
whatever you want to do, but I'm going to add feet. So these are the feet. These I got at Hobby Lobby. Um, they're kind of expensive, really, but these were in the wood section. You know, the little decorative wood stuff. So, and it, I guess when they're half off, they're not expensive. But obviously, there's four cute little feet. And then, you know, I've, I've gotten some off of Amazon, but of course, they're not right here by me. Of course. But I'm going to, I'll do one on camera and then one off so that I'm not boring you. Right? I just think it looks super cute. So it's the same feet as those. Okay, so this time I'm going to be using my Fabri-Tac Babikin. Um, and these are really cool because you just put the glue here and it just sits on the corner and it's just perfect. All right, you just flip it upside down and this will give you time to make some adjustments if you need to. So I'm just putting glue along the inside. I'm kind of being generous. You don't have to be that generous, but because uh, it will ooze out. You just hope it oozes out the bottom <laughs> and not the top. <laughs> Plus, this is a newer bottle of glue, and it's coming out pretty fast. All right, so you just sit them on there. Just like that. And I'm going to flip this over and check it out really quick. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to get it eye level. Oh, it's really oozing over here. Whoop, don't press down too hard. They're not attached just yet. Okay. Okay, I think, uh, again, I'm getting down eye level looking. I think I got it. I think I can just leave it be. So I'm gonna set this aside, let that dry. And I'm gonna put the feet on here and then I'll be back. They're still very wet, but I've got the feet on my little ink tray my little ink station feet are on the garbage bowl so i think now the last thing to show you is what this is here um, and you don't have to do this at all this is just a piece of craft plastic i will link it in my amazon list and when you go to look for it in my amazon list it is just a blue square it's just a blue square i get asked all the time where is it where is it i can't find it this is just a craft plastic you could use let me show you. This is glassine paper. You can use that. I mean, it works just as well. Um, I just thought it might be kind of cool to use this craft plastic because I could wipe it off in between colors because I have separate ones for different colors, you know? So I just trace the inside mat onto this piece of craft plastic, cut it out, and it just is going to fit right inside. Whoa. Hold on. Something got stuck. Don't squish too hard. The feet are still wet. So it just fits right inside of there. It's removable. And now it protects my paper from underneath from getting all grody. Okay, it's still not dry. Whoops, it's still not dry. But um, I went ahead and got my, my ink pad in there. So I'm just going to leave it be. So that is it, you guys. So that is the exact same thing that I have been using all along since I've been demoing my, or not demoing, prototyping my new template. So it's the same thing, exactly the same thing. And that's how you make it. So this is the ink station and this is the garbage bowl. I wonder if there's gonna be, a, there's really not a right way, an up or a down. Isn't that pretty? Doesn't that look good? So I'm gonna dump this one Oh, see the same feet are on this one too because remember it was the same as this right it was the same as that i've just been doing some mixed media on it but look look at the feet when they're painted aren't they cool i think they are uh, but anyways but okay you guys that's it that is all i have for you guys i hope you enjoyed um do uh, let me know if you have any questions and remember that i have pre-recorded some of these so i have time stamps down below so if you need to go back and see how to wrap uh, the crafty trays or whatever you need to um, get a refresher on. All that will be down below. And um, 
Be sure to give me a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. There might be some other videos here on the screen that you might enjoy. Don't forget to check out the description box. There's a lot of useful info down there. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.